morning of September 11th, hundreds of firefighters, including the men of Rescue One, went racing into the area of the Twin Towers at their peril. At the same time, tens of thousands of people were desperately trying to get out. Thankfully, many made it. Aaron Moriarty has the good luck story of one man living every day now as a gift. I was leaning up against the North Tower, having a cigarette. That's when everything changed. Brandon Singers! Come on, Blue, help him out! 38-year-old Brandon Smith works for an equipment leasing company near his home in Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. Cut him off, Mark, cut him off. But on the morning of September 11th, he took a train into the city for a business meeting. Arriving early, he stopped at the base of the World Trade Center's North Tower for one last cigarette. One of the World Trade Center security guys just started shouting, everybody in the building, everybody in the building now. I can tell you it appears as though something has gone into the World Trade Center. The first plane hit the building, dumping explosive jet fuel into the elevator shafts. Suddenly, the ground floor lobby became an inferno. Imagine you turning on a gas grill and closing it up and letting the, letting the gas fill up and then throwing in a match. Oof. Brandon tried to go out the same way he came in, but the door wouldn't budge. At that point, it was so hot, the metal had expanded and Brandon was trapped in what had become a glass oven. I thought of my kids, I thought of my wife, and I just said, God, you know, let me out of here. You gotta get me out of here. How did you get out? I just pushed and pushed. Brandon was in the tower less than a minute, but that was all it took for the whole world to change. Smoke pouring out of the gash of the north side. The streets are filled with people, stunned, scared. There are people with injuries from things that had fallen, other people burning, trying to get themselves out. And it was all in slow motion for me. It was really just like, uh, you know, being in a movie. Somehow, he walked to an ambulance and was one of the first to arrive at nearby St. Vincent's Hospital. Knowing that I was hurt, knowing that there had to be a, a lot of people hurt in that lobby, I felt pretty lucky. You felt lucky even though... I felt lucky the minute I walked out of that, uh, out of that door. But home in New Jersey, Brandon's wife Mary Beth was feeling anything but lucky. Driving to the office, put on the radio, heard the news, and said, oh my God, he is right there at that spot. Everybody has a cell phone to their ear, but nobody can get through to anybody. Unable to reach Brandon by phone, Mary Beth waited for news. Someone I didn't even know called me. The message was, Brandon is burned, but he is okay. But in fact, Brandon was far from okay was transferred to the burn unit at St. Barnabas Medical Center in Livingston, New Jersey. He was in serious condition. He had Dr. Hani Mansour is the medical director of the St. Barnabas Burn Center. 29% of his body was involved by the burns. Uh, he had very bad burns on his hands, on his face, on his arms. He had a problem with uh, the, the, the blast injury and the smoke inhalation, and he ended up staying on a breathing machine for about 48 to 72 hours. That was a rough time because I remember, you know, seeing your eyes look at me and just say, you know, what's going on? What is going on? Brandon, if you want to take your glove off. It took two surgeries for doctors to rebuild Brandon's hands and ears. It will take years of hard work until he is healed. <laughs> but just four weeks after the attack. I haven't been out of this building since September 12th. Brandon, Princess Leia's stunt double, <laughs> was ready to walk through another door. Really looking forward to you know, going home and seeing my kids. All right, here we go. Oh, you're not going to push your own cart. He was never discouraged for this. Never. Did that surprise you at all? No, not at all. He's a great person. Bye, nutrition lady. <laughs> Bye. Bye. He has a zest for life. He wasn't going to stop being that person. Bye. He wasn't going to stop enjoying life and making jokes and, you know, finding joy in the moment. Of course, everybody probably thinks I'm an alien. 
That's how he is. The alien snowman has come to St. Barnabas. And that's how he will be. Love it! I just can't believe that I walked away from, ah! you know, something that was, you know, oh. multiple times more significant than, than, than Pearl Harbor. Yeah, oh, come here. And I can't help but feel terrible for all the people that, you know, can't sit here today. Oh. Here's field six. And so, while doctors would prefer he played it safe and stayed out of the sun... The new buzzword is scar management. Brandon is determined to be there for his daughter's big game. Margie! There are so many kids out there that now are without their father or mother. Margie! Two families in our town lost a parent, and we've talked about that and, and how lucky how lucky we are that we are all here. Would you do me a favor? Brandon, who used to be coach, is now mascot. But Mary Beth says he won't be sidelined for long. Hit that ball, hit that ball. If anything, we want to live our lives, I think, more fully. I mean, who knows how little time you have left. In the meantime, a simple afternoon with the family will do. I got a retreat out of the sun. It was by far the most exciting six and seven year old soccer game I've ever witnessed in my life. Still to come. How do you get about rebuilding a unit like yours? The best laid plans of Rescue One. Next.